How does the brain learn to read? We're living in the information age. Being a strong, confident reader is more important than ever. But the brain isn't meant to read. Humans have not evolved to naturally acquire reading and writing skills. We have to learn how to read. So, how does that happen? Let's find out. This is the left hemisphere of the brain, the part most essential for language and reading. When you look at words on a page, the brain processes it from back to front. It starts in the occipital lobe, goes to the ventral areas, and explodes into other areas in the left hemisphere. So what does that mean? Let's take a closer look. This is the occipital lobe. It is the part that processes visual information. So as you see letters and symbols when you read, this part is activated first. After the brain processes the visual information, the word formation area, or the letterbox, is activated. The letterbox is where we store our knowledge of letters. It is highly specialized for recognizing written words and letters. The activation of the letterbox triggers a burst of activity, activating two networks. The first network is related to the pronunciation and articulation of words or sounds. The second network is related to the meaning of words. We know that these networks of sounds and meaning already exist for people whose brains have developed normally. Reading consists of connecting vision and language, so we need to create an interface between the two. We can gain insight on how to do that by looking at how the brain changes as a person learns to read. One of the biggest changes is the letterbox area becoming activated. People who do not know how to read do not have an activated letterbox. When the letterbox becomes activated, that means that representation of speech sounds becomes more precise. So a big part of learning to read is connecting individual speech sounds to different letters. This can be seen in the brain. The higher someone's reading ability, the more fiber tracks we can see in the brain that connect these areas. This bundle is involved in connecting the letters to the sounds. When you hear a sound, you can also think about its letters. So the anatomy of the brain is literally changed as a person learns to read. So what does this mean for teaching? The brain processes every single letter and does not look at the whole shape. Fluent readers process letters in a word at the same time. It happens in parallel. The brain is not looking at the whole word or the whole shape. The brain processes every letter. This is true across all languages. So teaching letter sound correspondences is essential. We need to use explicit instruction methods that strengthen the neural pathways in the brain. This allows students to become strong and successful readers. So what does that mean? Let's look at this example. B, A, T, but, B, A, T, but. First, the phonemes or sounds were explicitly segmented and blended. Next, an explicit connection between sounds and letters was shown. This is one way to teach sound symbol correspondences explicitly. This kind of method can strengthen the neural pathways in the brain. This way, a strong connection is made between the letterbox and the sound network. But that's not all that's needed to become a strong reader. There are a lot of interconnected strands or parts that come together when a person reads. This was visualized as a reading rope by Dr. Hollis Scarborough in 2001. And that's how the brain learns to read. What did you learn? How will it change the way you teach? And what do you still want to know? <laughs>